Apprentice, we're finding God in video games, and today we are going to discuss Obi-Wan Kenobi's finale, so if you haven't had a chance to watch it yet, please do click out, go watch it or something, come back and see us. I mean, don't forget about us. We're still going to be here, and it's going to be really awkward if you never show up, like we're going to be waiting if you didn't come back, it'd be very sad. But if you have watched it, great, join us. If not, last spoiler alert before we get into the finale of what I says is the season maybe series i guess we'll know for sure in the future of that's Obi-Wan right i didn't Kenobi. notice we, that they didn't say that so there may be more in the future so with that we had a few thoughts about where this was going to go at the end of the fifth episode and i think we got most of it right but i will fully confess i missed it on the the reva piece i really didn't see her coming out of this alive because she doesn't show up at any other point that's kind of why i think that this was just a season versus a finale of the series because it's kind of odd that she's not dead. Well, I mean, it's it's for the best for her. I'm sure she's well, very excited that she's still around. Yes. But it allows a lot of opportunity for her to now get embedded into maybe a storyline with the new Andor series or anywhere else that they decide to go where they're going to have connective tissue to you know Star Wars Rebels and all that right. kind of stuff. Clearly, she's maybe going Ahsoka? to be... Maybe. I mean, she's not going to really have any leaning any one direction now and now that she's essentially a jedi who lost their home it became a sith now lost that home who That's knows why what I she wonder could if she'll become. be in ahsoka because ahsoka she'll obviously be never much went. much older though if she shows up in that series unless it's the flashbacks or something right but she did survive her her foray into attacking luke skywalker's aunt and uncle <laughs> which i mean Granted, they, they shouldn't have been able to, to hold her off no. even as long as they did. I mean, she was still a Sith Inquisitor, but, you know, kudos to Owen and Brew. They obviously don't do quite as well when they face an entire garrison of stormtroopers much later on. But they, they handled business a little bit there. Her storyline kind of came to, I, I don't know if it's an end so much as a fork in the road where she's kind of now, whereas she's Maul... Defeated. Well, you know, in, in Rebels, you know, Maul gets there and Obi-Wan dispatches him later on right. in, in Rebels. She gets there and decides, you know what, nah, I'm just not she cool with the whole killing, killing kids, kids thing. And no. things. Yeah. So even if it happens to be any of Skywalker's kids. So that's, that's the one thing that we kind of missed. But what I really liked about this was we finally got full Obi-Wan Kenobi, the entire Obi-Wan Kenobi experience showed up for this one. His, almost his full strength. I wouldn't say 100% of it well, came back, he but a left, lot of it did. He, he, he left Anakin alive, which to me was actually Weird. more of a, a sign of strength indicating I don't have to kill you in order to beat you. I, but I don't know. I'm like, obviously, Anakin had to survive for obvious reasons. Well, before we get to that, movies. that was an epic lightsaber battle honestly for me on par with the mustafar scene yes. i wish it had the original score i was waiting for duel of the fates to kick in at some point even if it was just a, a minor aspect of it I was, I was waiting for that that old music to kind of show up at some point but without that it was still a, a triumph in terms of storytelling you you had vader demonstrating that his his new lightsaber technique and Without all the acrobatics, still right. a very formidable force user. Got the high ground. Clearly thought he knew what to do with it this time. He was horribly wrong. Unfortunately, not only does Obi-Wan Kenobi really always is. have the high ground, he can control the high ground and pick it up and throw it at you, which he <laughs> did, and it was fantastic. It was all the Obi-Wan Kenobiness that it's, I hope. It's kind happen. of like um, in the last episode that we watched where, you know, it had the – the scene with with Vader, Vader ripping and, apart the ship. No, no, no. With Obi Wan and Anakin, when it was actually Anakin, oh, and Obi Wan was telling him how, oh, you know, you can't keep thinking whatever, and that's exactly what happened this time too. Did you notice that? Oh, actually, Anakin got in his head. And he's like, oh, well, I already beat you, thinking he was dead. Obviously, he wasn't, and that's when he lost sight and got weak, and that's when Obi Wan. Well, I went think in. that 
what was really interesting for me within the battle was, first of all, that was as much of a display of Obi-Wan Kenobi's force capabilities as we had seen, not just escaping from the little rock slide, but controlling all of these boulders right. and pummeling Vader into submission yeah. with them. He was also much more brutal in his combat. He went straight for all of the life support systems. I don't know if he knew what they did, but he sure was pushing buttons <laughs> on that thing, hoping to shut that down. But then you got to what I would say was the whole, if, if you didn't know why they should even do this series, and a lot of people are wondering, well, why did we, why did we even go through this? I mean, you took all of the toys out of the box, and in the end, you know, you have to put them right back in the box afterwards. Right. Luke has to survive. Leia has to survive. Obi-Wan, Anakin, everybody essential to the storyline. You kind of remove the stakes from it, knowing that everyone has to progress. It's like a prequel. That's why Which, I don't like prequels, because it's like, I already know what's going to happen. Having said that, just the scene where Obi-Wan cuts into the visor, you finally see Anakin's actual face underneath that. Yeah. You see Obi-Wan connect with him as, that's that was my friend. That was, you know, almost you know, like my younger that? brother. That's, you were yes, my brother, Anakin. friend, my brother. In a way, he raised him as a child. All of those things, you see that. And when Anakin is speaking, and it's cutting in and out between his voice box and his real that voice, was... that was as powerful of a moment as you I've seen in a Star Wars. It is anything it movie. Is. So television we've seen show, all of the Star Wars movies. One would assume. he's more of a Star Wars fan than I am. I like Star Wars. I'm just not like oh Star Wars like he is. And for me, that was super emotional, and I was tearing up in my eyes because I was like, oh, snacks, this is getting me. This is getting that, me. That was going after that the fills. You saw Obi-Wan actually for the first time process that he has he has lost, lost Anakin, his friend. not killed yes. Anakin. And that's an entirely different problem. He was tormented for years over the thought that he had killed Anakin right. and trying to rationalize that. Now he's realizing, no, I didn't kill him. I actually lost him. He's gone, not dead gone. He's, he's just he's not, just there, not anymore. there anymore. Yeah. And now that it, obviously they got to do this knowing where they were going to go in the story. But the opportunity for Obi-Wan now to get to say to Luke, Darth Vader killed your father is actually an accurate statement now. At first, you, know, you kind of look and be like, oh, you know, Obi-Wan's just a filthy, lying old man. But it's true based on his understanding of it. And for me, this brought something that has always been the biggest problem for me in the prequel trilogy to a place where I, I now accepted it, which is I never liked in Revenge of the Sith when Anakin just kind of, he goes from, I'm a Jedi, this is not right, we have to do this by the book, to let's start let's off in some younglings now, all. and we're just, yeah. just going to just gonna take out all Jedi. It was a very smooth transition. He just went... From one place to another, and it was hard for me to reconcile that because Anakin didn't really ever get to any place logically quickly in his life. No. And he just jumped, and that was, it was very abrupt from a storytelling standpoint. Now, with the benefit of this in hindsight, the concept of, well, it really wasn't Anakin at that point. It really was Vader Taking almost... Taking full control over Anakin. Exactly. Vader was kind of there all along, slowly creeping up on him. Right. Slowly influencing you know, the the attack on the sand people. That was kind of that was more Vader getting in there than it was Anakin right. becoming that. Because you saw his regret afterwards. Right. But the further he got into it, the more Vader started to take over. His fall to the dark side was much earlier than what we comprehend in Revenge of the Sith. That was just the moment that Vader finally had full power over him mm -hmm. and was able to effectively kill him off in personality and character. And the good that Anakin was died at that point. Yeah. But I really like the parallel there where he says, well, then my friend, you know, was truly gone. gone, which is the exact same thing Luke says much later on to Vader before Vader takes him to Palpatine and says, well, then I guess my father truly is gone. And you could tell that kind of caught him. And he was like, I feel like I've heard that somewhere before, and it really offended me the first time I heard it. And I don't like hearing it now. And obviously, Vader goes through a complete change of character after that, right. saves Luke, you know, all that good stuff. I like the mirrors between those two things. They did we, a really good job with that. They, they tied in why Obi-Wan would tell Luke. 
Vader killed the father. We, now we understand why Obi-Wan said what he did here versus what Luke says later. And I think that now the battle between Obi-Wan and Vader is actually much more potent in Episode 4 because the last time he saw Luke and Leia together was when they were born. And then in that moment, he sees them together and he's like, he understands now that the Force has brought this to this place, and his portion of this is now to step aside and let them advance. And then, of course, Qui-Gon. I thought that was... Well, I think we all expected that to happen. I thought that was the best way you could kind of put a cap on this, is that he finally sees Qui-Gon. Qui-Gon's like, look, I was here He's the whole like, time. I've been you here cut time. yourself you off from the Force. <laughs> I was watching you. i kind yeah. of not sure what your deal is. But <laughs> we have a lot to talk about now that you can yeah. finally see me. I want to know me. what that's going to be all about. That's why I need another season. Because I was like I was kind of telling you when the episode was over, I was like, man, there's so much more they could do with Obi-Wan because I feel like that was like a month's worth of time. That's like just talking about a month. Short it was, it was a very short period of time. Long, but, but so you still have all these years with the gap that we have no idea. So what does he do now? Where does he go? Who does he save? Obviously, he's just gotten the horse back with him. There's got to be more that he's going to do. So you don't want to see a whole series of him and Qui-Gon just shooting the breeze? No, talking about I want to see Obi Wan gaining full strength back and maybe even becoming an even better Jedi now that he has the Force again. Well, he's a totally different person, obviously, in the movies. When you get to Episode Four, he's kind right. of he has a sense of humor back. Yeah, he has the swagger to a certain degree. I mean, he he's an old man running around the Death Star, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm good." Yeah, just <laughs> it's literally full of hundreds of thousands of people that yeah. want to kill him, and he's like. Yeah. All right, so I, I wanted to see that version of Obi Wan. I think we finally got there with this. I love that there, we yeah. finally got the uh, the hello there moment <laughs> with, with Luke. You love that you're like that he was, said it one time. That's all I needed. I just needed <laughs> one time for him to say that and smile afterwards, and we got that. So if for no other reason than that moment, getting Qui Gon, you know, Liam Neeson, getting to do that character with him one more time. And a lightsaber duel that, for me, truly hit the mark. It if really that did. If that wasn't what you wanted in a Vader versus Obi-Wan fight, I don't, I don't know, know what, what else you wanted. Was... They had an epic one-on-one -on -one intentional showdown on a new planet that we hadn't interacted with, and they went all out with the Force. We got in-close lightsaber battle. We got some taunting, and you finally got the emotion of Obi-Wan getting to really talked to Anakin, at least what was left of him, yeah. and then seeing that part of him shut down. And I loved when Anakin was like, you don't need to apologize to me, because you didn't do this. And for some reason, to me, that was almost a bizarre act of kindness, because it, it released Obi-Wan to say, so this isn't my fault. And maybe that's what really pulls Obi-Wan well, back at the, the very first place. end, Palpatine asks Vader, you know, are you getting too emotional in this? Yeah, you good, and bro? <laughs> he's like, are you okay? And <laughs> Vader's like, I'm good. But obviously you could tell that there was a sense of emotion because why would Vader tell Obi-Wan that unless there was some type of emotion tied to Anakin saying, listen, don't hold yourself accountable here because this isn't about you. Yeah. This had nothing to do with you. Unless Vader had emotions still, yeah. obviously. Clearly so. he did, because Palpatine was sensing it from however many hundreds of thousands of miles away. Like, dude, you got to get yourself together. Yeah. And the interesting thing is Palpatine wasn't, what do you mean Obi-Wan beat you? No, no, mess him up. Go get him. No, he was like, you need to just move on. And I don't know if that was so much Palpatine like, look, best two out of three, you've still lost. It's yeah. not working out for you, yeah. buddy. Or... If Palpatine was Concerned simply... Concerned because of his emotions. Yes, that maybe he could turn back. Maybe another battle with Obi-Wan would actually be enough. That Anakin would break through and get back into the circle. Who knows? Who knows? Obviously, eventually Anakin does get pulled back to the light. And it is through a lightsaber battle that he loses. So maybe there's, there's an essence of Palpatine knowing there's some foreshadowing here that this is not... Vader losing is not good for... Anakin's psyche here. He's right. got to stop facing Obi-Wan. Because you, you wonder, like, why wouldn't Palpatine at least be like, well, blow up the planet, something. We have to yeah. we have to end the threat. But Palpatine clearly doesn't think Obi-Wan's a threat to his empire. 
is only a threat to Vader right. and his mentality. And he just tells Vader, you need to stop. Just grow up, man. It's, it's grow up over. and let it go. You're not. You're not. No, we can't say let it go. That's a whole different Disney thing. But <laughs> you just had to say it, didn't <laughs> it did. It did. You brought great shame to our family today. Dang it. So you did. You brought it up. <laughs> if they ever did another Obi-Wan, what would you predict? What will they do? Not what well, should they do. What will they do? Didn't Vader say that he wasn't going to stop at the end and he was going to keep going? And then Palpatine was just like, whatever. Or am I wrong? I feel like Vader said, well, I'm going to keep going anyway. I don't know. I, if he, I didn't really get I, that from him. I, I, I think that he was chastened and understood it was time to be done with that. Yeah. And obviously the Inquisitors don't show up a great deal more after this. You get them in Rebels and such. If they're going to do anything with Obi-Wan, here's my thought, is he could potentially end up crossing paths with a younger version of Ahsoka or the Rebels or something I think like that. that. Would be cool. And and give us some something there, but it would have to be for the purpose of braining in maybe, you know, Kane and Jairus or something like that. Giving those characters Doesn't an opportunity. Doesn't Kanan know who Obi Wan is? Well, of course he does. You know, he was he was still a young lean at that point, but who right. doesn't know who Obi Wan right. Kenobi is? It's kind right. of a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot of opportunity that they could get some kind of crossover, and that's what I'd prefer to see. I don't know if they'd be willing to do it, but what I would like to see is to introduce some of the live-action Rebel characters there, knowing that we are going to get to that place with the Ahsoka series later on down the road, where clearly she's going to be going after Thrawn. She's going to be chasing after wherever Ezra went. Maybe this is an opportunity to introduce some of those characters early on. I think that would be really cool. I would, I would totally be down with that. So that's my thought. I don't think you can you, have, obviously, Vader can't come back. You can't, I think we've seen Vader enough Vader can't Maul, get to Tatooine. Because Maul's still alive at this point. He, well, the thing with Maul is we know his end game. We and know. Obi-Wan takes him out on Tatooine, and it's, it's like three seconds worth of a lightsaber battle. So, can't really shoot a whole series around. No, I feel like... You're going to need entirely different um, protagonists if you're going to go into a completely new season. That's where Obi-Wan could be a player. I do think that the Rebels could be that. pretty good and then just have like one off. Or you do an entire mall thing. Well, those are our thoughts on the Obi-Wan Kenobi series and our hope for another season of it. And our thoughts of where it could go. Let us know. You know give us some comments or something. Let us know what you think, what where it should go next and if you enjoyed it. And either way, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time when we talk more Star Wars.